Okay, this was the question at the end of the previous video. So I ask you, would you reject the null hypothesis or not? So here it's associated with the p-value. You can look at the p-value for this slope, the coefficient. The, co the, the test about this coefficient, uh, p-value is given here, 0. So, and remember, if the p-value is smaller than the significance level, then you have to reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, yes, you have to reject it. So, so you are rejecting 1%, more like most suspicious 1%, but uh, this case, this data is 0%. That means the most suspicious uh, top 0% suspicious observation. So automatically we reject. However, it's actually a good news because the hypothesis was a negative, like a uh, means, like means that uh, the model is not relevant. So if the high, the null hypothesis, the original null hypothesis means beta zero equals to, beta one equals to zero. That means x has no effect on y. That means the regression model cannot do anything. Right, the regression model had not, cannot have any does not have any prediction power. So you want to reject the null hypothesis. You want the p-value to be small in most cases. Otherwise, if the p-value was large, then the regression model cannot have any prediction power. So you are losing this result. There is nothing you can do with the uh, result. So, of course, when you do an analysis, you want to reject it. So you want to have a smaller p-value. And in that case, if you reject the null hypothesis, we specifically, we call this statistical significance, right? Statistical significance. So we say the coefficient beta 1 hat, the estimator is statistically significant at alpha. That means, this means by definition, the, we tried, we conducted a hypothesis testing that this parameter equals to zero, but we rejected. So the parameter is different from zero, which is statistical significance. Okay, so sub interestingly, this term is formulated before the hypothesis testing theory was developed. So. Regression was actually, we are learning from the hypothesis to the regression, but, but in the history of statistics, this term in the regression was developed earlier than hypothesis testing theory. And then this term was statistical significance was used earlier before the hypothesis testing uh, term is developed. Like significance level was termed from this usage because we call this significance, okay? And you know, so now, I, as I promised, I'm going to show you a real data. So this example, in this example, we are studying the returns to education, or we are going to predict the wage given the education. So we observe, so y, the, the dependent variable y is the hourly wage, and x is the years of education. So if you graduate high school, X is 12. If you graduate four-year college, then X will be 16. And then if you enter, if you get a master degree, then it will increase accordingly. So then, in this case, as your, if you get, if you are more educated, then you would expect higher hourly salary, wage. Of course, your hourly wage will increase, will tend to increase as your education increases. So beta one captures the rate, the relationship. So if you, uh, if you are in school, stay in school for one another year, then your hourly wage will increase by beta one. And beta zero is, beta zero is the intercept, which can be interpreted this way. Beta zero is the expected wage even if your education is zero, right? Still, you can do, you can find some job 
then uh, you can uh, expect some uh, hourly wage. However, it's it has little meaning in our data because in our data most of the people are like have have positive strictly positive education. So it's hard to find anyone who has no education. So of course in practice uh, it's not easy to interpret what it means and hard to check if it's true. But anyhow. So we are interested in, so suppose we are interested in this question and so we use real data from National Longitudinal Survey in 97 and it includes more than 2200 observations. Let me show you. This is the data. Education and wage. So uh, there are, as you can see, 2245 observations, but actually one is the variable name, so 2244 observations. And if you look at the distribution, there are actually zero. There are someone who have zero education. Oh, excuse me, you cannot see it. So if you use filter, then you can see what variables are here for education. Maximum education is 18, so two years after college graduation, and minimum is zero. So let's see. So there are two people, two people who claim they have no education. I don't know, it could be like some error or could be real, I don't know, but pretty small. Only two people out of more than 2200. Okay? And wage, hourly wage, the hourly wage in 90, 1997, the minimum in our data is one point, nearly $1, and the maximum is $40. So there is a big discrepancy. Okay, so then we are going to apply the linear regression analysis by clicking tab, uh, data tab, and data analysis tab the button and regression okay choose uh, y is wage oh yes okay that's pretty much the same same set okay I'll press okay to then you see first let me look at let's look at the scatter plot scatter plot is a little bit weird because Oh, let me see. Ah, excuse me. That's my bad. I uh, I only included 12 observations. That was the... So let me include... The dependent variable is wage and the independent variable is education. So then now it's okay. Okay. This is the correct scatter plot. Correct plot looks like this. So education is distributed from 0 to 18. And as you see, the so red is the trend line. And the blue are the observations. There are more than 2,000 dots on this scatter plot. So someone is making this much money. But there, it's interesting. There are, there is someone there is someone who finished only nine years of college uh, education, but makes nearly the maximum hourly wage, earns the most, the highest wage among all the people. And all, of course, there are like people making forty dollars an hour across like different from different educations. But all the most of the people are distributed here. So if you estimate the, re the linear regression model, the tendency, the trend line goes like this. The red, if you connect the red dots, they, it becomes the trend line. So compared to the earlier examples, the deviations are much larger. The error terms are much larger, right? That's, that's reality. And uh, we will, uh, 
you can imagine this this data, but it's more complicated. It's hard to read what is going on. So we summarize the data, quantify the results with these guys. Okay. So uh, let's see what we have here. So here, these are the main estimators. Intercept is estimated to be minus 1.96. And the returns to education, the coefficient of education, is estimated to be 0.74. So this means that, uh, according to your data, according to the regression model, if you stay in school for another year, your hourly wage will increase by 0.74 dollars. That's the interpretation of this number. And what's strange here is the intercept is negative. That means if you have zero years of education, then the expected hourly wage is negative. But you know, it's impossible. Negative salary is impossible. Then what, what does it mean? It just means that there must be an estimation error. Estimation error, it could be the problem of linear assumption. Like you assume the, the trend is linear, but it may not be linear or just estimation error could happen, making it a negative number. But anyhow, it's actually not a big problem because in your data, there are not many people near zero observation, zero education. So oh, it must be inaccurate in those uh, on those area where you have few observations. So I don't think it's a big problem, right? And then standard error, you have standard errors calculated. Uh, so standard error for the intercept, which is much larger. So let me reduce the decimal places. So the standard error for the intercept is 0.6, but the standard error for the slope is 0.04. So you know, like add the coefficient, the slope is nearly 10 times more accurate than the intercept. As I said, it's natural because the intercept is the salary where there are few observations. So it cannot be accurate. So this is not a big problem. And now then look at the T statistic and the P value. Now it's now we are coming back to our slide. So that's how we uh, calculate, the, use the real uh, data for uh, in the linear regression model. Okay, then our estimation results are given by this point estimator and the standard error, right? As I said, one more year of education will increase the hourly wage by this much. Then from only those two numbers, let's calculate the confidence interval by yourself. Try to calculate it, or if you don't want to do it, you may just download the data. I, I will post the data with the slides and do calculate the confidence interval on Excel. Like, like following the same steps, you can just do the regression analysis. Then you can find where the confidence interval is and choose the answer. Okay, the answer is, remember, the 95% confidence interval is calculated uh, by a similar formula. So the point estimator is known and standard error is calculated uh, and a Z value, top 2.5% value is 1.96, which was the common number. Uh, it's, this is the number for 95% in two-tailed test in the confidence interval. So in the end, it becomes this. So the returns to education point estimator was 0.743. But actually, you have to allow certain margin of error. So it must be between 0.65 dollars to 0.83 dollars. So that's how you interpret this. So look at the real output. 
So uh, I will delete these two. So these numbers, these numbers are the confidence interval we are calculating, right? So uh, slightly different. The slight difference is uh, because of the rounding error, I guess. Rounding error arises here, so uh, the Excel does not have that error. But we experience a little bit of error, but pretty much the same. It shows we are doing the same thing as Excel. Okay, okay. Now going back to the hypothesis testing again, our estimation results tell you the point estimator is 0.743, and the standard error is 0.046. In this case, we want to test the null hypothesis, the standard null hypothesis. What do you say here? Calculate the t-statistic and determine if it's rejected or not. And you may use those numbers. Okay. Okay. So it's two-tailed test, and the, the significance level is 5%. So we know the threshold for the t-statistic is plus minus 1.96. You remember? So you calculate the t-statistic, and if the t-statistic is outside of plus minus 1.96, then you reject the null hypothesis. Then how do you calculate the t-statistic? The difference between your estimator and your hypothesis, so 0.743 minus 0, and you divide that by, standardize it by the standard error, which is 0 0.046. So you calculate this. And if you do the math, uh, you get 16.152, which is huge in terms of in the scale of standard normal distribution so your difference is 16 more than 16 standard deviations away from your belief which is a big difference so your belief must be wrong your belief is very much inconsistent inconsistent with the data your uh, so your null hypothesis is rejected in other words you you can say that your estimator is statistically significant. That means your estimator is statistically significantly different from zero, right? So that means uh, education is useful in predicting uh, the wage, the hourly wage, okay? Or instead of the t-statistic approach, you may use the p-value approach, but the result must be same. The p-value, two-tail test, it can be calculated uh, this way. Standard deviation, a uh, standard normal distribution, smaller than minus 16 and uh, greater than plus 16, obviously zero. So 16 is a huge number in standard normal distribution. So let's compare those numbers with these things. So these numbers, 16 point something uh, and, um, and p-value is zero. Anyhow, p-value is zero, so it's smaller than any uh, common stand significance level, so it will be always rejected. Or t-stat is large, that means uh, the larger the t-stat is, your estimator is more significant, statistically more significant. Okay. So we learned how this bottom panel, this panel is calculated, and we learned how to interpret them, how we use them. Okay, and also of course we use we learned how to do it, do this part. Okay, back to the slides, and we are going to do. Uh, so I I told you they are same same thing. Uh, another difference here is rounding error. There could be a round rounding error, and also another difference is t distribution instead of normal approximation. All the theory that I told you, I taught you, is based on the normal approximation, but it is just an approximation. So there might be small approximation error. 
compared to the T distribution. So Excel uses T distribution, which is pretty much the same as normal, but there is some approximation error that could result in the difference. So T stat is we T stat we calculate is 16.152, but Excel calculates it as 16.296. I'm not exactly sure where the, this error, small error came from, but I guess two of them, uh, like uh, one of these two, round, rounding errors or uh, normal approximation error, but not a big deal, right? Okay, let me then, let me try a different hypothesis testing based on the same regression results. We, again, the same, we use the same results and we want to test this. You believe that the returns to education should be greater than 0.7 dollars in terms of the hourly wage. So you put your argument in the alternative hypothesis. So now it becomes one tail test. So, but otherwise, uh, something like you have to give up your hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is 0.7 or smaller, right? smaller than 0.7 is not considered it's because it won't happen in your hypothesis uh, so equal to 0.7 or greater than 0.7 that's your competing hypothesis and can you calculate the p-value based on this uh, one tail hypothesis testing and you just need these two numbers from the results Okay, so remember how you calculate the p-value for the one-tail test. First, the t-statistic should be calculated, but it's the same. t-statistic is the same, but now, so remember, t-statistic is calculated as your estimator minus your hypothesis divided by the standard error. So it's easy to calculate, right? t-statistic is your estimator minus your hypothesis divided by the standard error. Earlier, this part was zero because your hypothesis was zero, but now your hypothesis is 0.7. So your T statistic should change according to that. Uh, so following the hypothesis, your T stat becomes 0.93. And then it is an upper tail test p-value is calculated only on the upside probability only greater than greater than 0.93 the t statistic which is 17 percent 17 percent is greater than uh, the usual significance levels so your null hypothesis is not rejected so you thought so if you believe that the null hypothesis uh, if you believe that the hourly wage, the returns to education is not greater than 0.7, then even if your estimator is slightly above 0.7, still it's acceptable, right? It's pretty much consistent. The difference is within the standard error, like only 0.93 standard error away from your hypothesis, which is acceptable, which can be understood as a random error. Okay, that's how we conducted uh, the hypothesis testing, how we interpreted the results, right? Okay, this is how we apply the estimation and hypothesis testing theory to the regression results. Oh, it's, it's not a big difference, just follow the same intuition, then follow the same uh, structure, then you get the same, you can apply the same inference methods in here. In the next next video, I will start prediction method, okay, which is new in the regression chapter. Thank you for watching. See you later.